called Primitive about five months back. Uh, I'm the CEO, she's the CTO. We are very, very new in the space, and we started off right with the UEFN. Uh, so we want to take you through the journey of the last five, six months and what we have been doing. Can I get a kicker? Thank you. Yeah, uh, to kind of give you a broad overview, uh, we started off with kind of trying to tell stories within the Fortnite experience. So we started with a little bit of Creative 1.0. Uh, the idea was to kind of bring uh, in-game virtual building, world building kind of thing, right? Where we kind of bring influencers from within the Fortnite ecosystem with our unreal artists. A uh, lot of gyan over there, but to give you a little bit of a gist, right? Like I come from a media background. The basic principle of every media background, uh, every medium is that you should be able to kind of uh, do storytelling on demand and within a timeline, right? That is how mediums start monetizing it. And that's where we got our inspiration from. What if we are able to kind of do storytelling upon demand when somebody kind of generates a brief and then within a specified timeline, and that is where we kind of started cracking around on this particular model, right? Uh, UEFN was a great tool for us to, we knew that it was coming out, and UEFN was a great tool where we had kind of started investing into certain people, certain skill sets. The first skill set was definitely Fortnite, where we started kind of reaching out to people who already build worlds, kind of learning from them how they're building their worlds in Creative 1.0. Uh, the very other side of it was where we started hiring a lot of uh, Unreal Engine artists, and they were doing a lot of metaverse building for us. Uh, both of them, from a very commercial angle, was making sense to us, where we were able to kind of build custom maps, the other part was the assets that need to be built out on UEF, uh, on uh, Unreal Engine. And the third part that was there, coming from a media background, we were able to use this to our advantage on video production projects as well. This is what we kind of experimented with right off the bat. Uh, but then when UEFN came, it was a complete game changer for us because we were about to uh, uh, kind of put two worlds together where we are able to kind of bring storytelling to a very different meaning and to a very different light, right? Arvind spoke about, uh, Arvind Neelakantan spoke about the fact that there are new generations that are coming out, uh, specifically Generation Alpha. Gen Z that is kind of on the brink of going away and Generation Alpha is gonna be in the driver's seat pretty soon. Interesting factoid is that Generation Alpha grew up on the iPhone back in 2010. They already started experiencing the world in a very, very different way. For us in entertainment, coming from a video background, we could sense this about a decade back that people are moving away from video, right? The way that uh, video was getting consumed was absolutely catastrophic, if I can tell you any, in any other words. No wonder people like Netflix are kind of getting scared with gaming spaces, and they are also trying to venture in. Because the traction, the sheer engagement of the medium is kind of not and nothing in comparison to what gaming offers, right? Uh, a lot of stats have been put out there where video is being triumphed almost by 2x uh, when it comes to the average amount of time that the generation is spending over there. So we are actually predicting that within the next two to three years, the way entertainment is going to get consumed is going to be drastically, drastically different from what it is today. And that's the foundation for us to kind of get into these spaces, right? What we want to kind of bring together is where gaming, storytelling in entertainment format and advertising formats, if they kind of collide, how will that world look is what we are trying to postulate and pro uh, uh, prophesize right now. Having said this, I'm going to kind of give the mic to Geetika and uh, ask her to speak about our first two projects, which were our flagships in the last two to three months, uh, which is Clombo Run as well as Mass X. Over to you, Geetika. Thanks, Yes. So hi, everyone. I'm Geetika. I'm the CTO at Primitive, and I'll quickly take you through the two games that we've built in UEFN so far and our journey through it. So the first one is uh, Clombo Run. Uh, you know, we put this game together, I think, in two months uh, with a small team uh, of one designer, one developer, and one artist. Um, so uh, in this game, we've actually brought Clombo back um, uh, into Fortnite Creative. Clombo, as many of you would know, 
uh, was a very popular character from uh, Fortnite uh, Chapter 3. So as the game starts, the player's stolen an egg from Clombo's cave and obviously Clombo is not happy about it. He begins to chase the player and the game quickly turns into an uh, endless run. Uh, the main objective is to keep running as far as you can from Clombo and collect as many eggs as you can in the process. And of course, eventually Clombo will catch up with you and uh, you know you can start over. So uh, when the game starts, there's a short tutorial to help players get familiar with the controls. And we actually have two versions of this game. This is a single player game that you're seeing and this incidentally is also available at the Unreal booth outside. You can go and play the game there. Um, the other version is a two-player game, which is um, uh, much more engaging for players, as we discovered. And um, so moving on, if you look at the core features that we try to build into uh, the game, it's a, you know, we decided to go with the simple endless runner gameplay because uh, our ta target audience was 8 to 12 year olds and this is a genre that they're familiar with. We put in an enemy, you know, just for good measure. Um, although the Endless Runner was not uh, available out of the box as a device on UEFN, so we had to spend some time building it and creating it in a procedurally spawning manner. Uh, talking about the visual compatibility, we decided to go with the Fortnite look and feel because uh, you know, again, our target audience engage with those colors and, and that kind of theme. Uh, we had Angkor Wat you know, in a, as a reference for the jungle when we started out, but we faced some problems bringing in, um, you know, assets and optimizing them for UEFN. So in the end, we decided to go with the available assets. Uh, and yeah, the Clombo equity, um, you know, Clombo was uh, something that was already popular with a lot of players and when it disappeared, they were not so happy about it. And so we wanted to use that, you know, curiosity about uh, Clombo to draw them into our game. Um, but uh, from a development perspective, you know, we had to spend time animating the character. It's, it's not a biped. Uh, we did the animation in Maya and we faced issues bringing uh, all the, you know, the various animations into UEFN. Um, but I think the part that eventually worked for us was to take it via Unreal Engine. Uh, we also, if you saw in the first cut scene, uh, we wanted to have facial animation for Jonesy, but we just couldn't bring it into um, UEFN. So, um, but uh, I think what happened uh, for us as a team was we solved a lot of problems. We found uh, a lot of workaround for the issues that we faced and with that we got more ambitious and uh, we decided to create uh, a game called Mars X. This is still in the works and uh, what you're seeing here is, is a vision board for it. And uh, the idea is, uh, I mean, the narrative for the game here is that um, the player lands you know, on this uh, colony in, in Mars, and uh, he joins a team of uh, settlers which are actually trying to build the colony. And, uh, but there are, you know, these uh, space aliens uh, which, have, which are shapeshifters and, and they've infiltrated the team and you have to discover them and, and uh, you know, uh, eliminate them before they eliminate you. Um, so again, the core features are an immersive cooperative uh, gameplay where the players have to collaborate with each other. This, is, this will be a multiplayer game. They have to collaborate on colony building tasks and uh, you know, figuring out who the shapeshifters are. Uh, we are going uh, for a visually spectacular setting. We really want to push the limits of what uh, UVFN can do with uh, you know, the look of this game. Uh, we've actually we're looking at data from um, NASA, SpaceX, and ISRO uh, so that we can create, you know, as authentic an experience of Mars as we know it. Uh, we're tr trying to bring in the height map of Mars and, you know, to create a nice rugged landscape and use atmospheric effects and sound to uh, create a truly immersive experience. Uh, the gameplay mechanics will uh, involve social reduction. Players will have to engage in... Um, uh, you know, strategic discussions and 
uh, figure, you know, gather evidence and vote on, you know, who they think the shapeshifters could be and uh, continue the gameplay. So with that, um, and sort of to, you know, with this as our North Star, we uh, decided to test the waters uh, by submitting an entry into the epic uh, mega jam for UVFN this year. And, and this is a video of the game that we created in seven days. So the player uh, has just crash landed onto Mars. And these are the visuals that they get to see. See that button? That's your ticket out of this So room. in this version, the collaboration is, you know, through an AI. Um, and we use uh, AI-generated voiceovers everywhere. Oh, so it's oh, guiding the player that, through too. what needs to be done. Whoa, did you see that? A glitch in the matrix or just a regular Tuesday on Mars? Stuck? Maybe one of those boxes could give you a leg up or you could just enjoy the view. So this functionality to lift objects and drop them was something that we developed ourselves. Two buttons, one door, it's like a bad riddle. Got any ideas? Whoa, you just vanished. Where'd you go? Ah, the other room. This teleporter thing might just be our ride out of here. Here we're using post-processing to um, post-processing shader to create uh, a sort of antiquated version of the room that the player was in. And there's a time limit in which the task has to be performed. And then the player goes back into the original room. You just vanished. Where'd you go? Ah, the other room. This and teleporter so, thing might just be our ride out of here. What you see here is a replay of the task that was performed, uh, you know, in the antiquated room, and we built our functionality to sort of replay it in the nice. uh, within the game. Your ghost is pulling its way. Now, let's get through that open door. Wow, look at that view. Our ship's a wreck, but let's keep moving. We've got bigger fish to feed. Finally, you're here. I've been monitoring your progress, and I must say, you've proven yourself. Your next mission? Set up a colony on Mars. Are you ready? So this whole environment was created using the modular sci-fi pack from UE, which is 10 GB, and we, you know, highly optimized all the assets to make them work within UEFN. And, uh, you know, again, audio was something very important to this game, so we created uh, original audio assets to be used. And I just like to end with saying that, you know, I think UEFN is, is a really amazing tool. It's, it's very easy for just about anyone to learn it maybe within a month's time, uh, depending on uh, you know how, how committed you are to it. And it really democratizes game creation because whether you're an artist or a developer, you know the complement of skills that you don't have, um, you can easily find them on the platform and, and your, you know the limit is really just your imagination, cliched as it may sound. So I'd like to hand over back to Arvind with that. So for us, what's, what's interesting is the fact that our level one, which was Clombo Run, was almost like a 
playground for us to kind of get our Unreal artists to start working with Fortnite influencers, right? Get the storytelling capability altogether. The minute that happened, the step up from a Colombo run to a Mass X was absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. What we want to kind of build is basically in that particular intersection where creators and storytellers are able to kind of collaborate with UE artists on a regular basis to bring elaborate storytelling into UEFN, right? That's, that's where I think we will be able to strike gold uh, as a studio. Now that studio business is going to kind of work for us on three different levels. One is trying to kind of upskill, upscale creators who are using their current gameplay and raw creativity. We're able to kind of channelize that particular creativity and go towards a specific brief within a specific timeline. What it opens up for us is basically two forms. We can build things for ourselves and become uh, a uh, uh, an entity who's publishing regular maps or on demand uh, uh, for any other publisher who's trying to storytell in some particular way. Or the second interesting part is advertising. We can tap into brand storytelling and kind of create these small experiences that can live on forever. What we think is that there's an imminent future where bringing artists and creators together, they'll be able to kind of uh, give us this particular entire ecosystem uh, can deliver this ecosystem where we are able to seamlessly kind of deliver on demand, uh, uh, deliver creative narratives on demand. That's the golden goal for us. Uh, with that, we are primitive. This is our journey. We're just getting started. We don't have a lot of answers just yet, but we are getting there.